All right. Welcome, everyone, to 3D Printing Made Easy, how to get started at your own practice. I am Julia Kemesis. I'm the partner manager at Accurata, and it's my pleasure to be the host of today's webinar. Um, I'm really excited. We have some really incredibly skilled and smart people at this event today who have dedicated their professional careers to providing high quality education to their colleagues. So I, I'm super happy to welcome Dr. Russell Schaefer, the principal dentist and owner of NOLA Dentures and General Dentistry. And he's joining us today from the beautiful New Orleans. So I'm super excited to have him here today. I've been working with him for a while now, and it's, it's always been a pleasure. Dr. Schaefer, as the name of his office tells us, is focused on producing digital restorations, save, serving an ever-growing population of partially or fully indentulous patients. Um, every year, he hosts several workshops about how to get started at your own office, and we're thrilled that he's here today with us and sharing his wisdom on 3D printing, so that's really great. Also, this webinar is co-hosted with our partners at Cadre, and the Cadre team is really a group of brilliant digital trainers that combined have like 200 years of experience in dental. Cadre is also really well known for providing the best customer service and great workshops and trainings. So I'm really happy that they're here today as well to give you a little bit of insights of what they're going to be offering. Um, so stay tuned for a special webinar offer exclusive for this event and uh, that, that they'll be discussing at the event today. Um, so we have a great lineup. I'm really excited to have you all here. Please be sure that if you have any questions for the speakers that you can put your questions in the questions tab and we'll have a live Q&A at the end. And we really want to hear from you you know, what's your personal experience and what has brought you here today. So feel free to share that with us. Yeah, regarding that event. So I'm just going to give you a quick outline. We're going to have Dr. Schaefer speak first, and then we're going to go on to the cadre guys who will give us an introduction to their services, their, you know, promotional specials that they're doing right now. And then we're going to have the live Q&A. So with that being said, I'm, yeah, I'm thrilled to hand over the microphone to Dr. Russell Schaefer, who's joining us from New Orleans. Hi there. All right. Hi, Julie. Thanks for, oh. in, thanks for introducing me. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Um, let's rock and roll with the presentation. Awesome. So, so as I was introduced, my name is Dr. Russell Schaefer. I'm a uh, dentist out of New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, kind of my love, my passion is uh, dentures, honestly. I'm probably pretty crazy for that. And, um, you know, today's topic is 3D printed trial smiles. And I think there's just kind of a, I wanted to talk about this topic because I think it's like a really good one to kind of dive into for, you know, beginning printing. Uh, next slide, please. You know, Kind of my goal is to kind of show you different types of trial smiles we have, you know, and, you know, some indications for when I do, when do I do 3D printed trial smiles, give you an idea of the equipment needed for this um, and show you how I design the trial smile and how we print and process one, then how we try one in and, you know, how do we use this trial smile for a temp whenever we have a bigger case? You know, I kind of go through all that in my presentation. Next. You know, my background, um, I kind of got started in, Early 2018, I remember Corey Glenn, one of my mentors, talking about how Blue Sky Plan was going to start doing dentures. And I said, man, this would solve a problem for me. Um, kind of what I got into it was being able to do a low cost, immediate denture in one week. It was nice to be able to do an upper, lower, immediate denture for 40 bucks and maybe an hour of time. And I found with these patients, especially if you can just, they say yes, and then as soon as they say yes treatment, you kind of want to move along quickly so they don't lose, um, you know, the desire to continue on. They we want to get them with their when they're ready to move. Next. You know, so what is a trial smile? Um, I'm sure there's other definitions that are probably better than this one. My idea is that a trial smile is pretty much to show the patient, hey, this is where I can get you to. And I think that's important in dentistry because it would kind of suck to do a big, any aesthetic case at all, you know, especially where patients, you know, idea of what they're gonna be at and what's your idea where they get you to, where you get them to are two different things. Um, and so I think trial smiles are pretty nice to be able to show patients, hey, this is where I'm thinking and make sure the patient's on board with whatever treatment you're doing prior to starting, honestly. 
Um, Cause it would stink to be in the wrong, if you both are in the wrong place at the end. Next. So probably one of the most common methods, and this is something I've done in my own office, is, you know, photo book method. You just show patients similar cases of what you did in the past. You know, um, I've got a couple of photo books in my office. They're nice for my staff to go through. And, you know, you print them out nicely from, uh, I think Google has it now in a couple other services, and you get you some ideas. Next. You know, the advantage of it is it's really low cost, and you can really show off your work, you know, and you can really edit it. The problem is that if you're just starting out, it kind of requires a large number of cases to have, a, you know, to have. And then you don't, you can't quite promise that every single patient will look the exact same as your book, you know, shows it will. Next. Another way, probably the most top, uh, popular way is the analog wax up. You know, we take models, we send them to a lab, lab waxes it up, you know, we create a stent and then you um, put that stent in the mouth and place some bisacryl into it. And you can give a patient an idea of what it's gonna look like. Next. Biggest, ad, biggest advantage in my hand is that, you know, if you're working close to the lab, it's nice to have the lab tech see it immediately, you know, so they can say, hey, this is how I want to handle it. And I think as dentists, we like having models in our hands. It just feels very natural. It's just something we want, you know, if you give the dentist models, we're going to put them together. And they're really nice for subtractive cases, you know. Sometimes we need to cut things back quite a bit to make them look good. Biggest problem really is, is this the higher cost, you know, what is it, a good lab might charge 25 to 50 bucks a unit for this stuff. Um, they're not the easiest things to transfer in my hands, at least. It does take some practice. And also it does take time, you know, maybe a few weeks or maybe even a month to get these back and the patient might lose interest in the case. Next. Uh, the next one is a digital tri photo trial smile. This is kind of a very popular thing. This one here is from my friend, uh, Dr. Mike Agadakis out of uh, Orlando, Florida. Um, you know, pretty much where you take the patient's smile and you put, you take out the teeth and put teeth in there. Now, Mike's doing a little different way than I'm producing right here. This takes him some time because he's doing ExoCAD. But I think we've all seen this done before, this technique. Um, go to next. You know, I like this, especially some of the easier apps, like, um, you know, you have your phone. It's pretty easy to do. The problem is that easiness comes at a cost that sometimes you can miss pretty key information that, you know, might come back to bite you later on if you're not thinking through it enough, if that makes sense. And I, I think we've all been there. I know I certainly have where I've jumped into a case, not really quite realizing what I'm getting into until it's too late. Um, next. You know, kind of what I do is I, what I've done in my office, and I really kind of started this year, was doing 3D printed wax ups, which is pretty easy. You know, we create some digital models, we put the models into a CAD program, we design teeth over the models, we kind of subtract, you know, the model, the teeth from the model, or the model from the teeth, and then you get a bridge of some sort and you print that out. And then you can remember to just snap on this bridge over a patient's teeth, you know, like a snap on smile. Next. I like it a lot because I can get it back quickly. You know, um, in my office, I do it myself. If I've got somebody who's really ready to go and they got something they need to do tomorrow, I can get them back this in a day. Um, but if you don't want to do this yourself, you know, in your own office, you can send this off to a lab and there's a lot of great labs that can do this for you. I like it a lot also because there's not that much chair time. You know, I think there's nothing more impressive to a patient when they walk in and you just put something in their mouth and they walk out. And that gives the patient like, oh, wow, this is pretty darn high tech right now. Like it just, you know, it's kind of the old saying when it seems like when you do everything right, it seems like you did nothing at all. And I like that a lot. I also like it because you can allow patients to take it home. And sometimes that's a benefit. Sometimes it's a con. But I like that a lot. And I think finally, I really like it because it's this is like working with composite. And composites really easy to work with. I work with a lot of acrylic in my office because I love it, but I still would rather work with composite any day of the week. Biggest problem with it, I find, is that it is purely additive. You know, if you're doing a subtractive case, this really won't show things off too well. And, you know, you can't make that kind of like knife edge margin all the time like you want to. So not, there is a material limit for the thinness of this. Next. You know, so this is kind of a patient I had. I'm sorry for the bad pictures. Um, these are old pictures we had. I thought better pictures before I took it. You know, before I started this case, but patient had this gap for 40 years, um, and she was kind of interested during the gap. You know, so you can see right there, she just has like just teeth rotated uh, between 23 uh, and 24. Uh, next slide. And she doesn't really want to do ortho. She's like she's a firefighter, and you know she just you know she just wants to get something done. If that makes sense. Next. 
I think the other issue too is people say, can we throw a mini implant in there? And you, I don't think you can sneak an M mini implant in there, no matter how hard you try, without destroying something. So, you know, ortho was kind of nixed. We decided not to do implant. So maybe the bridge is the best option. So next slide. What happened was we patient came in, we had to do a, a full contour zirconia on number 15. I used my Medit I-500. I got it from um, CADRAY, fantastic scanner. I love that darn thing. Um, so we scanned the patient's mouth during number 15. Uh, next. And then I'll kind of show you the process I did for how I did it in Blue Sky Bio, or Blue Sky Plan, I'm sorry. So we first select Crown and Bridge. You know, we pull up this at the two models. We orient them in Blue Sky Plan, which is pretty easy to do. And then from there, all I really do is go in the go in Crown and Bridge module. I want to take a look at everything, get an idea. And then I add a couple of teeth to it. So I add three teeth in this case. And what makes that nice is I can kind of just say, okay, I want to put teeth. And I like Blue Sky Plan because it's fairly intuitive with how you want to move stuff around, if that makes sense. I, I play with three shape, I play with ExoCAD, and I still go back to Blue Sky Plan all the time because I just love the software so much, honestly. So I get an idea of this is where I want to put the teeth at right here. And then from now, I'm just trying to kind of cover them all, especially the linguals. So I got enough width, uh, thickness there. Next, I'm trying to bulk up the, the connections there, the connectors, just so that I have enough room. Now we try to get a path to draw. And I from there, I got a bridge, you know? And that's, in my mind, that maybe this thing took me maybe 15 minutes to do, or maybe 10 minutes to do. And I think for new new people, it'll probably take about maybe half an hour to do your first one, maybe an hour at most. But uh, next slide. Um, but no, I think that you know that's pretty darn easy. Um, we're not shooting for perfection per se. We're just kind of shooting for something that looks good enough to give the patient an idea of what we're looking for and what they're looking for. And so you can see an image right there of you know what our and that's kind of a final image of what the uh, bridge looks like right there. So we printed that out. Next. And that's the back side of it right there. Next. And that's actually what it looked like printed out in my hand. So we just snap this on, on the patient's teeth. Next. And what I did, this is a long-term patient. So I said, you know, I, I didn't quite love how I made the Pontic look right there, but not the biggest deal. And I add a little composite to fix that. But I was able to say, hey, we put this crown of 15, you know, take this bridge home, show it to your husband, see what he thinks and see if you buy into it. And I loved it because it maybe cost me an extra couple bucks in materials, but you know, she has a long-term patient, I loved her. And I wasn't too worried about it. And she said, no, perfect. I'm happy about that. But she ended up saying yes to this. So next. You know, and this is kind of giving you an idea, like it takes one day to make this honestly. And these things are cheap. I mean, um, about buck fifty per crown. I mean, no, pretty much no resin was used at all. And I mean, what's a what is a typical cost for a bridge in your office? You know, in my office, it's about you know thirteen hundred dollars a unit or so. So that's a four thousand dollars fee for service. But if it's Delta, you know, it might be looking more, more like twenty four hundred dollars. So still easy money in my opinion, especially if when you can show a patient what you're looking at. Next slide. You know, so we we was able to use this as a I wax up as a temp later on. Next. What we did is we prepped 23 first and I relined the template snap. I use snap because I love it. Most because I'm an acrylic guy. I don't have any biscuit in my office actually. Next. And then we prepped 24 and I just relined that as well with snap. And that took seconds um, or minutes, sorry. And you can see right here that you do see some show through just because the material is so thin right there, but that's, it's a temporary, not too big of a deal. Next. And then, um, you know, we I adjusted the occlusion a little bit because she did bite a little hard on it. I did change up her bite. Her tongue wasn't completely happy with it. That's understandable. And then we uh, cemented it as a final, which I love for temp cement. Next. And then, um, you know, the biggest challenge I had here was that seven to 10 are all splinted and they're all C1 PFMs. And her adjacent teeth are all A3, you know, A3.5. And so we decided to make it match the upper arch and then we'll whiten later on. So next slide. And uh, this is done by my friend, Dr. Kyle Shank. Um, he's a lab tech turned dentist, turned lab tech again. I'm not quite sure which one, but he does my, a lot of my high-end lab work and he does phenomenal work. So 
We got a nice C1 uh, folk uh, contour zirconia bridge. Next slide. And I, I just said, you know, the patient already gave me, you know, three, a three unit bridge for fee for service. I said, I'm gonna do some whitening for you for no charge. It just kind of saves everyone's butt. And she's happy about that because that saves her some money. And it saves my bucks. I'm not trying to do like really intense, you know, um, shade matching. Next. So this is probably one of my weirder cases that I came in. And this is a complicated restorative case for me, mostly because when the patient came on in, the wife said, and this wasn't, this was probably the problem. The wife was dictating treatment, not necessarily the patient. No dentures or no full dentures. So next slide. You know, and I find that, you know, this would be a normally there's be an upper immediate denture, lower cast RPD in my office um, 99% of the time, but patient doesn't want full dentures. Okay, well, let's, let's make sure we get the patient back into a better spot. So next slide. You know, we can see the teeth right there. This guy's gone through some hell, um, you know, and he's just broken everything. And you can already imagine, you can see just how he's incising on those, um, the upper four interiors right there. Next slide. So this is how I kind of worked up his case in Blue Sky Plan here. So same thing, import the models. Here I uh, lined them. Because the teeth are so broken down, I use the denture, I mean, edentulous module, starting to close the holes in Blue Sky Plan. That way I get a little better fit for my crowns and my uh, bridges that I'll be making. In this case, I'm adding four teeth, and this is just a model I did afterwards. In the initial one, I did all um, all of the um, teeth and the indigenous areas as well to give them an idea of what it would look like with the parcels in his mouth. But here I'm just checking the thickness, make sure I got enough you know room, um, and seeing what my shelves would look like. From there, you know, we kind of just move everything around where I want to, which is always easy to do. Um, doing trans translucency so I could see again the thickness on it. And for him, I'm not too worried about his opening of the bite. You know, because I got to put teeth somewhere here. Um, and I just kind of decided, okay, let's just put them on there and let's see what it looks like. So what I'm doing here is kind of determining the size of the edge that I want. And also how much, you know, connection space do I want between each of the units? Because I'm going to put this all together as one piece. And um, for him especially, I didn't quite know if I actually was going to do this as one piece or make it as a two piece, you know, seven, eight, and then nine and 10 as two different bridges. But I want to, I pretty much ended up printing out three different options for him. That way on the day of, you know, trying, we could make a decision on, I mean, sorry, on the day of trying, I wasn't beholden to one path to draw, if that makes sense. So I'm ending up liking everything here. You know, I'm adding a little bit of thickness to it. And this is my single unit path to draw. So I'm saying, okay, that one looks the most correct to me. And Blue Sky Plan figures it out, you know. So I got create a union right there. Now I just do two of the teeth at a time. Let's see here. I'm sorry, this is so 40, but you can see from my, you know, the lingual of it, export it as a union. And then I do seven and eight together as a bridge. Same thing, find path to draw, create a union, go from there, nine, 10, same thing. Make sure you get rid of all undercuts because for some reason they have a 0.1 under, a millimeter undercut, which I don't understand. But if you do it once that way, you will learn they won't seat. So, but you know, so, and right here, I'm just kind of like trying to change the context up a little bit because I want to have both um, eight and nine kind of just barely touching each other like a regular contact would be. And I export them uh, both out. And from there, you know, that's about all that's involved right there. So, you know, we scanned the patient again with my Medit I-500. Um, looks pretty good. Next slide. You know, and then I just designed the crown. So ideal contours, kind of like I was showing beforehand. This is the actual one on my done form right here. So I threw in a couple extra teeth to give them an idea of what everything will look like at the end. Next one. And here I just had his one piece right there. You can see I added on there six, um, 11, and 12 for him. Next one. Next one. And that's what it looked like printed in my hand right there. Something I can easily just insert into his mouth. Next one. So he tried it out and he and his wife said yes to treatment. 
Now, I did not let him take this home because he would never come back to my office. He would just use this as a snap on smile. So he got to, you know, put it in his mouth for a few minutes, you know, for a few, however long he needed. And they said yes to treatment. Next one. Next one. So we decided to restore his dentition with crowns, full coverage of zirconia crowns. I'm a huge fan of it, of the material overall. Next one. Next one. And then um, what we're going to do for him as well is make him um, pretty much do the edentulous areas just with, um, you know, RPDs for right now, maybe on down the road and do some uh, implants for him. Uh, for him as well, we're going to do a survey crown number 12. Uh, which is kind of easy to do through Blue Sky Plan and using a couple other pieces of software, but I'm not going to get into that today. Um, but no, that was the plan. We just prepped 7 to 12 for F full contour zirconia. Uh, next one. And then for the temps, I decided to splint the 7 to 10 in place. He was in temps for two months just because of he wasn't coming back on in. I guess I made the temps too good. These are the temps after about two months in the mouth right there. They look a little stained, worse for wear. I find that brushing actually the baking soda is the best thing for these ones. That seems to clean it the best, in my hands at least. Um, but next one. So, you know, with this one right here, we prep the teeth. We, we, I kind of cemented each one, you know, um, as one piece. Uh, sorry, I splinted it all together, prepped each tooth, realigned with snap, prepped another tooth, realigned with snap, prepped another tooth, realigned with snap, and kept it going on like that. And during the whole time, the patient was on chlorhexidine rinses as well. Next slide. So I like designing the crowns myself. I like this a lot because then I have complete control over the case. Um, and the one mistake I realized I'm looking at this photo right here, you can see I had number eight, maybe just a little bit too long in size uh, gingerly. Um, that's not something I caught until later on, unfortunately. Next one. And then um, I use this, I used the temps also to take a bite as well on them. So I got a somewhat of a stable bite on them. Next one. And so we tried in the crowns with a uh, A1, and he said they were too dark for him. You know, of course he did. He mostly said he didn't really say it to me. I think his wife was telling it to me. But I was like, okay, fine, it's good. Sounds good. Let's go for something lighter. And so, uh, next slide. You know, um, they said let's go for B1. I talked about how B1 looks really white, and they said no, we want that. And so I had a uh, alien milling made these for me. Um, next one. And, you know, these were the B1 uh, crowns in his mouth. I wasn't as happy with these ones right here, even though these are the exact same crowns. I'm hoping that then that the black triangles kind of fill in over time. I think just the fact that he had been that temp um, for so long kind of destroyed some of that gingiva. Um, next one. And um, that was my whole course right there. You know, um, I love this whole process so much because it is easy to do, honestly. And I think that's a biggest thing for dentists is, it's got to be easy. It's got to be a, you know, it's fixing a problem in my office, which is I need teeth quickly and I like having wax so quickly. Um, if you want to learn how to do this sort of stuff, I teach a course on this digital dentures. And um, I'm also going to be including a lot of this stuff as well, because I've had some people reach out because this is what they want to learn. Um, my office and my course information is denturece.com, November 11th and 12th of this year. And um, we're at, down in New Orleans. So it's a good time. You know, it's, New Orleans is a good time in November. But um, thank you so much, Julia. That's my entire presentation right there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Schaefer. Absolute. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I know there's going to be a lot of questions for you regarding your process and the materials you use and, you know, along the, every step of the way. But I would say let's start out with Frank DeLuca and Wayne Glasser from Cadre. So Wayne Glasser is the VP of 3D printing at Cadre. And then we have Frank DeLuca sales representative so it's a big pleasure to have the, both of them here because these guys really are the experts when it comes to going digital so i'm going to hand over the stage to you guys and then join back later for the q a session thank you thank you julia really appreciate it uh like julia said my name is wayne glassoff i am the vp of 3d printing over at cadre um cadre is if you're not familiar with us cadre is a focused dental distributor uh kind of made our claim to fame by distributing the Medit uh, scanner, the intro scanner. We are the world's largest Medit sales organization. Um, 
But what we really made our name with is our support and training. Uh, so that's what really sets us apart from everyone else, myself, Frank, our whole team. Uh, we're really experts on digital workflow. So everything from scanning, printing, mailing, imaging, we're going to be able to help your practice take you to the next level. Um, and like I said, support and training are really what we specialize in. And we really feel that, especially with digital technology, it's really important to you know consider who you're buying from, um, not just price, uh, not just freebies. You know, look for people who are going to support you, educate you, and take your practice to the next level. Because that's really what this is all about. Uh, Dr. Schaefer, you know, made some really great points about how easy printing is to do in office and how efficient it is, how much more profitable it is. And that's what we do at Cadre. Everything that we talk to you about, whether it's a printer or a mill or a scanner, it's all about getting you as productive as possible with that equipment so you are becoming more efficient and more profitable for your practice. Um, so for those who are not familiar with us, that's a really nice overview of what Cadre, what we are and what we do. Um, and I'll let Frank uh, introduce himself as well, and give a little bit of a um, overview of, he's had a lot of experience with the Acura, the sold product. So I want him to, you know, as Frank's a salesperson, but he's really a, almost like a CDT. Um, he really understands digital workflow, CEREC specialists. Um, so he really understands and gets it. So we can really communicate with you on a whole different level um, than most salespeople can. So I want Frank to introduce himself and give a little bit of his experience with Soul. Sure. Uh, so my name is Frank DeLuca. Um, I'm a little bit of a, I guess you would call a dental nerd. Um, I just really enjoy playing with all these toys. And I really feel that uh, who you purchase from, it's so critical that they understand the way the equipment works. And j just to reiterate again what Wayne said about, you know, it's not always about um, the price you pay because in the long run, uh, getting you up and running as fast as you can, as fast as we can, um, is, is where you start to excel and you start to be able to put workflows such as what Dr. Schaefer just showed us uh, into your practice. Um, and there's a lot of dealers out there that are selling product that um, they just, they don't understand materials, they don't understand procedures, and we are all focused on uh, digital workflows to make your life faster, easier, and more productive. And Frank, if you can just talk a few minutes about your experience with the Acura and the Soul and how you felt about it and, you know, just your workflow with it, that'd be great. Yeah, so um, the Accurata Soul is um, is this little dynamite little printer that um, is just incredible bang for the buck. Um, just very high value, uh, really nice prints, um, really easy to use, and it just happens to be uh, a, a very good price point. So if you're, you know, kind of tired of playing with unvalidated workflows where things just don't necessarily work and, and you come back in a couple hours and you see that your prints failed. Um, you're not going to have that issue with Accuretta because they're doing such a great job with making sure that they know the resin profiles, they put them in and it just makes your life easy. Um, one of the things that we, we stress here at Cadre is, is workflow and getting your team involved in your workflow. And, um, you know, let's, let's face it, your assistant, she has, she or he has 75,000 tasks to do and throwing one more uh, task at them when it's um, very convoluted and she has to choose the layer thickness of the print, the curing time of the print, and then she has to export it to a, um, to a USB thumb drive and then she has to walk it over to a printer and it's just, it's too much. And um, these validated workflows with resins that you don't have to think about how things are done. It's, the, it's really sometimes the only way to get your team involved. And if your team can be involved, uh, you can move 
uh, 10 times as fast as if you have to do these things yourself all the time. Thank you, Frank. That's great. Um, just to reiterate, um, Cadre is here to help you. Um, that's what we do best, customer support, training, education. Uh, when you buy something from Cadre, you get free education. We're going to walk you through every single workflow that you want to go through. We have specialists for each workflow. Workflow. We have uh, ExoCAD specialists. So wherever you are in your practice in terms of your digital dentistry journey, uh, we have someone or everyone that can help you get from that level to the next level. Uh, so we're really excited to be working uh, with Accuretta. Uh, we're excited to be working with all of you. Uh, should you be interested in um, talking more about Accuretta, um, please take a screenshot or a picture of the QR code. Uh, that will give you my calendar to schedule a meeting with me. So at your earliest time of convenience, we can do that. And Julie, if you can go to the next slide. This is the webinar promo. So this is going to be good until this Friday um, at midnight. Uh, so I would recommend scheduling a meeting with me as soon as possible, calling into Cadre Sales. You can go to cadre.com, send us an email. 1-833-CADRE-1 um, is our phone number. Uh, but basically what we're doing for this promo is the MSRP is $89.89. We're taking it down to $77.50 for this promotion. And Accuretta is going to be throwing in another $695 of free goods. So you're getting the full Accuretta ecosystem at a much discounted price with some extra freebies. You're getting a two-year warranty. You're getting Accuretta training and onboarding. You're also going to get all the Cadre support, training, and education as well alongside that. Uh, so this is really a great opportunity to get right into 3D printing, to get a second printer. Um, if you haven't even got into digital dentistry yet and you're still exploring that, we can certainly help you uh, choose a scanner that's right for you, get you into an Accuretta soul as well at the same time. Um, we're here to help. So please, you know, feel free to reach out to us any which way you want. And like I said, this promotion will only be good till Friday at midnight uh, Eastern USA time. Uh, so please feel free to reach out. We'll be sending reminders of the promotion for the next couple of days. Um, but we look forward to working with you. Thank you for taking the time to uh, come watch the uh, webinar with Dr. Schaefer and ourselves. And I think we're going to have some Q&A now. So, Julie, if you're ready for that, let's do it. All right. Thank you so much. Um, okay, uh, Wayne, we just got a message that the QR kit didn't quite work in the chat. So if you can send maybe a link into the chat, that would be fantastic so that the guys can have Absolutely. that. Absolutely. No um, problem. Well, thank you so much for, you know, introducing yourselves and also, Frank, for giving an overview why you like working with the soul. I think this is generally an interesting question because all of you have experience with a lot of different printers. My question for Dr. Schaefer as well is like, you know, where do you see really that the soul is making a difference in your workflow and how does it compare basically, right? With Yeah. I like the sole because I like to be able to use whatever type of resin I want to use. Um, I've had a handful of different printers over the years. I've had the Moonray S, I've got the Nexta 5100, and I got the sole. And um, the Moonray S was a great little printer. It just went really slow. The Nexta 5100 is a great printer as well, but I, I'm tied to Nexta resins. And I, I'm, you know, if, if Nexta doesn't have the resin that I need, then I'm kind of SOL pretty much, not sole, but SOL anyway. <laughs> um, and I, I like the sole a lot just because I can print whatever I want to have. Like um, all of those cases I print out were Kuro, were Kuro A1 temp resin. And man, I love that little resin right there. It's a, I, I used MFH, a Nexon resin for the longest time, but the Kuro resin is going better for me. And it, it doesn't need to be mixed as much of how much I love, honestly. And it prints faster and it's a heck of a lot cheaper as well, which is always nice. Um, I like it as well because every now and then with my denture stuff, People will say, hey, you want to try this new denture resin? And it's nice to be like, okay, I can try that out on my soul. You know, I'm trying out the Rodan, um, Rodan denture uh, right now. And I like that material a lot. And I've tried other ones too. But again, my problem with the Nexus 5100 was all I could ever use was the Nexus 3D Plus printing uh, uh, resin. And it's a good resin, but I, you know, if you want options, it's nice to have the soul around just so that I'm not tied to one system. I'm a huge fan of open source, if that makes sense. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, 
good answer. Um, there, and then my question would also be, you know, from a beginner's point of view, how long did it take you to feel confident and comfortable in using digital workflows? And like, what's one piece of advice that you would give anyone that is starting, like looking to start 3D printing now? I would say that if you're looking to get started in this process, the best thing to do is to, anytime you're doing a lab case, redo the whole case in printing for free for the first few months, you know, until you feel comfortable. So for a lot of my immediate dentures, what I would do is I would just give away the immediate denture for free um, and take out teeth, you know, if you're taking out 32 teeth, I will gladly give away a set of immediate dentures for no charge. And that way it's like, okay, they don't fit, well, they're free dentures, so we can make another set. Um, what I also did too, for a lot of my cases when I was starting out, was that I would take the uh, bite rims that my, patient, my lab sent back to me, and after they were all set and whatnot, and I took the bite, I would actually scan that bite and make a set of dentures out of that for the patient just to try out. And so on the day of wax trying for my lab set of dentures, I actually had a set of dentures ready for my patient to go home with and see what they thought. And that was a really good way of learning just because, you know, you get some instant feedback. It, it does take a little more work on your end, but it's how you practice is that, you know, the patient gets a second set of dentures for free and who cares what set they like, you know, more and then as long as you're getting paid. Mm -hmm. And if you were doing, wanting to do what I'm doing right there and like learn how to do the crown and bridge stuff, I think the best way of doing it is next time you scan a crown, you send up to the lab, design your own crown, print it out. And on the day of delivery, try on the one you've made, you know, and see if you like it or not. And that way you can kind of see what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right, and, you know, what issues you're having. Uh, my issue I always had was I never cleaned things well enough. And I've, the cleaning, I think, does a great job with that, honestly. I need to be, um, and it's like, you know, you don't, if you don't clean all the resin out of there, when you go to cure it, you're not going to have a good fit because there's going to be too much resin in the intaglio because the intaglio is just the hardest area to get. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think you're very unusual in the, respect that you started out 3d printing with crown and bridge and dentures basically um so this is is that really the applications you started out printing because frank i'm sure you will second me on that one most people start out with models and splints um so you know we can kind of compare notes here <laughs> frank do you um, yeah uh, yeah yeah most um most users are definitely they're going to print a lot of models um and um, what, what Dr. Schaefer definitely uh, started with is definitely some more advanced workflows, but it also just shows you that, um, so oftentimes from a, from a perspective new user, we get, um, we get the comment, like, I'm not sure if I'm ready yet. And it's, it's almost like they feel that there's a learning curve with printing and um after dr schaefer i guess you could you could correct me if i'm wrong if you remember that that portion of your career um you print like three times and especially with a validated workflow and you you're over the curve already <laughs> i yeah i think i've just been doing it for so long that i've kind of forgotten how it with the first few weeks first month few months were but i find that like you said i think that I think the splints are an easy place to start at. And I know a lot of dentists love it, you know, yeah. just because like it's so low risk, if that makes sense. Like, okay, it doesn't, the splint doesn't fit or if something have a problem with it. Okay, I'll go back to my lab that I'm using. Um, I guess for me, I just don't do the main splints in my office because I do so much removal. I don't have patients that need to have teeth for splints. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Uh, you yeah. know, <laughs> can't do much about that. Uh, we had one question from Robert Landman, who unfortunately had to run out, but we can still answer the question because we'll have the recording, right? So he asked, what software do you use to design the dry trial smile? You did answer that, but it might be interesting if you give us a little bit of background, why are you using Blender for Dental? How does it compare to the other um, CAT software, basically, right? Oh, yeah, uh, well, so I use Blue Sky Plan, not Blender. Oh. Um, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Oops. But oops. that's okay. No, I like Blue Sky Plan just because it's free for exports, and especially on Crown and Bridge stuff. Like all that stuff you saw, as long as you have one export in your file or in your um, in your tab with Blue Sky Plan, you can print all that stuff for free. You can export all of it for free, which is phenomenal, I think. Um, I actually have ExoCAD that I bought, um, I purchased, and I find Blue Sky Plan to be an easier, easier program to use, especially for Crown and Bridge, than ExoCAD is. Um, that's just kind of what I learned. And so that's, that's why I like it. I like the, I like free stuff, if that makes sense. And I find the software to be fairly intuitive. 
Um, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that Exquid has, but I don't really need all those bells and whistles all the time. So I think it's like it's a really good beginning program to use just because it's such a low point of entry. Okay. Yeah. And I, I mean, we've personally had a conversation where you said uh, you're not necessarily somebody for having designs outsourced because you like to have the control. But is that still something you would recommend to beginners to look for a design service maybe? Oh, yeah. I think that makes uh, So my office is so small and so niche that I've got the time to do it. You know, I spend my lunch doing it. Um, but I think that right now I'm actually growing and I'm having to probably outsource more of my work. I'm trying to actually train one of my dental assistants to do 3D design. But there are so many good services out there that are pretty darn cheap for wax ups. I think like maybe you could send to some places out of um, China or other places like um, Eastern Europe for say maybe five to ten dollars a crown and they get it back to within two days or so. And then you could take that and just print that out. And that's well, I mean, that's essentially free for dentistry right there. That's cheap as heck. Mm -hmm. And especially the fact that you get it back so quickly, you can scan the patient Monday and have them come back next Monday and you're ready for them. I think that, you know, knowing when things come back is so nice. It just helps sell more cases. Yeah. Frank, what do you see um, most, you know, used, most, most approached by your customers? Where are you seeing the trend going? Um, so I, I talk to a, a lot of people met in many different ways. So design services um, are, are definitely are, are a little bit popular. Um, but a lot of people are starting to get into um, uh, ExoCAD and, and like Dr. Schaefer said, Blue Sky Bio. Um, but um, also because we sell so many Medit scanners, there's so many really good applications inside Medit that help people do the things that they want to do. So uh, it's, it's really just a combination and there's no... Um, there's no one workflow. So somebody might like one particular software for one specific thing and kind of bounce around a little bit. So there's no, unfortunately, there's no, um, there's no magical product out there that does everything everybody wants all the time. And that's why working with somebody like us is so important because we can kind of guide you through those processes. Yeah. I think there is, you know, there's a space in the market for everything. Everybody has a bit of a different requirement. I think we've all seen that. Um, you know, not everybody starts out 3D printing dentures on their on their second day with a printer. So, <laughs> you, yeah, Dr. Schaefer, you're a bit special in that regard. But it's very interesting to hear from you. So, I would love to hear from the three of you. Basically, where do you think clinical workflows are going to go in the future of 3D printing? What, where do you see us heading? I guess I'll start off first. I think that I think you're going to see pretty much to go into well, two different ways. I think you're going to see people be more like me. You know, some people that say, "Look, I'm going to do all my stuff in house. I like having a little control. I like that the buck stops with me. When something breaks, you know, when a restoration doesn't fit, I know whose fault it is. It's my fault, which is really nice. Or you're going to have him like one of my friends, Matt St. George, who actually has one of his DAs trained to be a pretty much a CDT, and that his in-house CDT, his uh, lab tech, pretty much takes care of everything for him. And he needs to prove the designs. So I can see that being kind of like the, you know, about maybe 10 to 20% of the people doing something like that. Um, and I can see a lot of people like, using this to like outsource, like, like um, I think Meta just came out with their, sort, their, their um, night guard uh, program a few weeks ago. And man, that's like, a darn good deal for like, it's just a, it's a pretty cheap, if you make a couple of night guards a month, it pays for it pretty much where, you can design a night guard immediately. And, you know, a patient says yes to getting a uh, night guard at the beginning of a cleaning. By the end of a cleaning, you can have a whole night guard made for them. And that's just easy. And if it doesn't work, well, great, make another night guard. That's not a big deal. So I see more either people doing everything with it, you know, or people, you know, outsourcing quite a bit of the work, but using the printer to almost deliver the work to them. Because that, that just, you know, if you can get rid of the turnaround time, I mean, turnaround time maybe adds an extra week to the whole process, in my opinion. Yeah, Julia, I, I agree with Dr. Schaefer um, in terms of design service versus uh, having the control and doing your own design. I think design service will probably, you know, do the bulk of it, uh, especially for beginning 3D printers. You know, my recommendation is always start with design service um, unless you have some background 
in design already. Uh, it just makes sense to work with either your local lab or a design service company that's reputable that we can recommend one as well um, to get started. It just takes that pressure off of integrating a new technology and also having to learn the complicated software to design for yourself. So it really flattens the learning curve when you can use a design service. I think as time goes on, I think more people will use uh, products like ExoCAD. Um, CAD Ray's coming out with a product called Clinix. So that's going to be exciting for a lot of people. Um, and there's going to be other programs out there as well that are just going to be you know, more intuitive, uh, easier to use as we go forward. But I think the future is it's going to be a bit of a mixed bag. I think more people use design service. Uh, but as they get more comfortable, they'll be willing to take on that control and do design. In terms of where printing is going in, in the clinical uh, setting over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, um, I think we're going everywhere. Um, there's still a few things we can't quite do yet on a permanent basis or even at all. Uh, 3D printed crowns are very, very close. There are some materials on the market that say permanent restoration. I still consider them long-term temps until they've been in you know, our patients' mouths long enough, um, but it's very, very promising and we're excited about that. Um, direct printed retainers and aligners should be in the near future, six months to 12 months, I would think we'll have something really good on the market um, for everyone to start doing that. Um, zirconia, Emacs type materials, I think those are a little bit down the road, but I think they will come. So I think there'll be a point in time where you really can do everything with a 3D printer in office to eliminate that turnaround time that you're getting from a lab now. You know, a week, two weeks, three weeks is just too long for patients to wait for a restoration. Um, and that's, you know, Dr. Schaefer says, that's where you're losing business. You know, if you tell a patient you can have it same day or next day, they're more than willing to accept the case. If you tell them it's going to be two, three weeks, it gives them too much time to say, you know what, this isn't for me, I don't want to spend the money, whatever the, the excuse might be. Um, it really just shrinks that case acceptance. Um, and that's where we're going. I think you know, 3D printing is going to be really, really exciting. Um, I actually saw an article today, the top nine trends in uh, dentistry today, and number one was integration of 3D printing into dental practices. Uh, so it's exciting. Uh, 3D printing is really taking over the industry right now. Uh, we're happy to be part of it and especially happy to be working with Accurate. All right. Yeah, um, same on our side. Look, working with you guys in the U.S. is is definitely right for Acura. Now, where you know you guys are covering all the important aspects of you know 3D printing and de digital dentistry with the scanners and everything. Um, so big thank you. Wait, we actually just ended up getting one more question, so I'll I'll pop that out here for denture patients. Is it recommended for immediate or for final? I think that so question is for Dr. Schaefer. Yeah, I can definitely answer that. So um, I would say when you're starting out with this whole process, make it only for uh, immediate dentures because it's just so much more forgiving. You know, no one's ever been, you know, sued or had a board complaint over a poorly fitting immediate denture. You know, and you really get to like kind of learn how it works. So I love it for immediates. That's where I said I'm going to start out with just because, heck, you do. You do one immediate case and or no, you do two you do two or three immediate cases and you've paid for the entire system right there. I think my initial set of cost twelve thousand um, dollars. and I think I paid for itself within like two months. Um, for the final dentures, I do them for my low end or low end PPO uh, final dentures. I do it all the time. It takes more work, it's not as um, productive because it's harder to scan at inch less ridges. I think uh, Dr. Armin Mazara had a good uh, show about that the other day on his on a CAD Ray's um, Facebook page. But I would say start with immediates because they're easy and you'll figure out very quickly whether you want to go to finals. I do finals all the time. I delivered four arches this morning for finals, but I'm also the oddball for that stuff. So do immediates is what I'd say start with. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for your answer. Um, okay. Whoa, there's another question here. Okay. Uh, actually, I've got answered. Okay, cool. So, guys, thank you so much. We're going to pop up here again the the promotion from Cadre so you guys can see, you know, what is offered. Check out the fact that you get $695 US dollars in value from Acura, Acura at 
add it if you purchase this deal. So that's a really cool thing. We're going to send everything out via email as well. So if you guys are interested, please book a consultation with the cadre team. We'll include that link for you all again. And yeah, thank you all so much, especially Dr. Schaefer. Thank you so much for taking your time. I know you're a busy man. You could be selling dentures right now. So thanks so much for, for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, and you know, we're looking forward to the next round basically, right? Wayne, Frank, uh, always great to see you guys and to chat with you. Uh, I really appreciate you sharing your knowledge. Um, yeah, wonderful guys. Um, so for everybody else who didn't join or people that have further questions, feel free to reach out to any of us. We're all available, you know, to answer your questions and then, yeah, we hope to see you all soon again. Thanks, wonderful Julie. guys. Thanks, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all.